Um, yeah, we're going to the donation system. It touches the member center system. Um, we have the multiple donation fund update and then connecting groups to committees and as well as some labeling for social media. Um, so yeah, this will take me about maybe 15, 20 minutes. Um, these are it's kind of smaller than the last one. The last one had a lot of different kind of little updates. So I'm going to share my screen here. And yeah, at the end of this, I would definitely like you guys' feedback. If there's, you know, questions you guys have about AMO, you know, we'll have a little bit about five, 10 minutes so you guys can kind of ask questions. Um, but yeah, thank you all for registering and joining today. I definitely appreciate it. And yeah, as we continue to do updates, we'll kind of make this a regular thing where we're kind of, you know, as we push updates, we'll do a webinar, uh, make a blog post, um, write some support articles. Yeah, so where I'm going to start, um, this is our developer account. Um, so where I'm going to start is the member center system. So for quite some time, people have asked about, you know, showing different member centers to different member types and things like that. And the member center is a pretty complicated area, but we were able to kind of finally specify how we're going to do it. And so we went ahead and created a member center display areas by grouping. Um, so the way this works is now if you go to website management display areas, you'll see at the top here um, that there's now a group area. So by default, we because, you know, we can't delete the old way it was done. So um, currently, there we by default set up a default display area grouping, and this is currently set to the default group. You can create another default group if you wanted the the standard one if you want it to be a little bit different. But by everyone who has AMO account um, already has a default one in place, which is the one that you currently have. Um, so we didn't remove anything or you know mess with your member center. What we did is we just kind of added onto this. So the the way this works, you can add a new grouping. Um, and then you basically select into the individual member types and it's uh, pretty straightforward, um, but I'm going to use this one as an example. So this one's member types A, B, and C. And then you'll see that there's individual member types and then we have member type B, A, B, and C here. So uh, once you add that, then when you uh, get to this screen, um, there will be a selection that you click on this. Um, see, I'm, I was kind of messing around here earlier. So I click on this, it should reload here. And then uh, what's going to happen is it's going to show you a different member center. So this view is for member types A, B, and C grouping. And then you can just basically delete this. Let's say you didn't want um, them to see like a directory, for example, or something like that, or the job board. You can just remove it. Um, you can rearrange it. You can add display areas, and they will be specific based on their member type. Um, so this is actually a pretty one of our largest updates to AMO in um, a bit of time here. Um, something people have been asking for for a long time. Um, so yeah, so basically this can be a way that you can upsell your memberships. Um, so if you have like, let's say like a platinum membership that they get access to all the other areas like job boards and things like that, um, you can definitely use the system now to give people different member center based on their member type. Um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You know, you could definitely go in there and mess around with it. Um, by default, you'll see that you'll be already on the default display area grouping. Um, and then, yeah, and then, you know, so your member center stayed the same. Um, it just now has this extra feature where you can create specific views. Yeah, so our next update is the donation system. So um, we had a few conversations with some people who use the donation system pretty um, heavily here. And so we now have a way for you to be able to, for people to be able to donate to your association um, to multiple funds in one go. Um, so here you set up your different donation funds. Um, I'm going to jump to the donation URL here. And then you'll now see that this has been reworked where basically you select a fund. And then you'll be able to add the amount. So let's say, let's say I want to do $100 to this fund, click add amount. Then you'll get to this where they can either continue to payment or they can add another donation. And this actually does, um, we did do it on the back end with the financials and everything. It's one of the more complicated parts of AMO when we do updates like this. Um, so these do still create like separate uh, fund invoices and all that kind of stuff. So QuickBooks reporting will still be the same. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click add another donation fund and then I can pick, uh, well, I picked the same one here, but if I return here, I can switch to, let's say Fisher Boys Scholarship, do 100 there, click add amount and then continue to payment. So it does the totals, um, it breaks down and then that way they can basically then pick, you know, however they wanna pay and then pay for those different funds. Yeah, so this is, um. You know, one of those updates that I think is kind of quality of life kind of for the donation system. Um, 
And yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Um, when you're doing the donation system, you'll set up your different funds. You'll have a donation URL here. And then you can also display this on the renewal. I could definitely, um, so Holly asked, um, Basically, is, it, is there an easier way to rearrange the display areas or like have a display order? Um, I'll, I'll throw it on our development board and see if we can maybe add some kind of like maybe um, display number or something like that. Like I know that's how it is in other parts of AMO. Um, so I'll definitely bring that up. Um, but yeah, right at the moment, the way it works is basically like click, you kind of drag, and then you can kind of rearrange using that. But I, I definitely understand probably what you're saying there. It's, um, you know, sometimes hard to get it placed exactly, but um, yeah, I'll definitely bring it up and see if there's a way we could maybe add something like that. Yeah, so um, yeah, no problem. And then the donation fund, so this is what it looks like. Um, and then the way you tie your donations into the front is through a short code. So you'll add like a donation short code and I'll add the donation button that goes over to the system. And so um, going into our next update here. So we've been kind of reviewing the committee's um, area and we have some further updates and tweaks we're gonna be doing to this committee stuff. Um, but basically what we've noticed is that, you know, we created the group system after we created the committee system. And we noticed that a lot of people are using the group system um, instead of the committees. And we've had quite a few inquiries the last few months about people wanting there to be a connection between groups and the committee system since they are, you know, used in conjunction together. Um, so basically, if you go to member management, jump to the groups area, um, you open up any of these, for example, board of directors, you'll now see there's a drop down here which says connect a group to this committee. So what this will do is all the people down here, it'll automatically add anyone in this committee, it'll add them to this group. Um, and it'll also, you know, if you, do, if you add, if you remove people um, from the committee, it'll remove them from this group. Um, so now there's a connection between committees and groups. Um, there is some other stuff we're reviewing with the committee system regarding reporting and the board only area um, that once we get further along on those updates, we'll share and kind of tweaks to the way the, the committee systems work. Um, but yeah, we're, we basically created a bridge between the groups and the committee system um, based off of about, I think like five different people asked for this in like, like last month or so, or maybe it was two months ago. But yeah, this is a pretty big update um, that, you know, we've just noticed that a lot of people are using committees and groups and some people use committees, some people use groups, but now there's a connection between them, basically. And yeah, and like I said, this webinar is gonna be a little short um, because these updates were pretty large, but not as in depth as like all the Q1 updates I covered in the last webinar. Um, so the next one is relabeling. So underneath association home labels, some people are familiar with this area. Some people, um, so currently we have a, a labeling system in AMO. If you want to relabel like subscriptions, um, if you want to relabel uh, organization to something else, um, this is basically our labeling system. Um, and, you know, right now, basically we added it. Um, so we had subscription, we had organization. You could also relabel individuals. So some people relabel like organization to households and things like that. Um, but now we added because of the way social media seems to be going. Um, we basically like, you know, with ones coming out, some become more popular, some people might not use LinkedIn. Um, you can now relabel these URLs and also at the same time, upload a different social media icon. So for example, we have um, a Twitter URL that we rewrote. So we, so we basically picked the individual Twitter URL and then we relabel this as TikTok. So you get to control what you call this as well. And then you can see that there's a TikTok logo here. So that way you can replace that that way in like directories and things that the social media feels kind of pop up, um, the, the icon will also appear there. Yeah, so um, yeah, the labeling stuff is, um, you know, we had a lot of people ask like, hey, can we add this social media? Can we do this one? Um, for example, like this is a Facebook one that was replaced with the YouTube channel. Oh. Yeah, so, and then you can see the YouTube icon was uploaded there. Um, this one's pretty straightforward. And then the last update is regarding the mobile app and the PWA. Um, so uh, off of the event, this hits the event side of the mobile app. Um, some of you might have the mobile app, some of you might not. Um, and basically if you go over to mobile app, we had an event section here um, called attendee directory. So basically this is an attendee list. 
And it's basically like a, a directory inside the mobile app for the event. And then uh, some people were asking basically like when you're viewing this directory, um, actually, let me pull it up here. Go ahead and log in. Um, so this is uh, um, the mobile app here um, for the event. It looks obviously odd in the browser. It's supposed to be more like, you know, something like this where it's like scale down. Um, um, yeah, but basically there's a directory in here and then this is the attendee list. And so right now, um, by default, the way we used to have it is you could click into here and then you would see this person's information. And so some people requested to have this page disabled. And so we basically just added a checkbox here that you um, open up that uh, attendee, that section on the mobile app area. So if I open up attendee list, there's now this box right here. If you go ahead and check suppress attendee detail page, and I might need to log on, log back in. Let's see if a refresh will work for this. So I need to log on, log back in, but basically it turns off that link when someone clicks on that profile. Um, that came from feedback from about three or four people using the PWA for a recent event. Um, and want to suppress that page to kind of just help hide personal information. Um, people also can hide themselves from this list too by clicking that eye icon. Um, yeah, so those are the May updates that we've done. Um, these are things people have been asking for for some time and um, kind of bigger updates here. Um, but yeah, it, while I have you guys here, you know, if you guys have any questions about AMO or feedback. Okay, so. Deborah asks, is there any plan to allow for multiple payments for one invoice and events? Um, could you give me could you give me a bit more details on that? So um, you're wondering if like they can like pay in different amounts or like for example, let's say they wanted to like, or you're talking about like alternative credit card processing. If you just want to tell me. A little bit more info, what you mean by multiple payments for the event. Um, but yeah, I have like, yeah, about six more minutes here if you guys want to keep asking questions. I see. Okay. So Deborah asked, um, is there any plan to allow for multiple payments for one invoice? And she said they have a registration for conferences. Um, we have the member and a companion you need to pay separate for the companion. So you're basically saying that like the person registering them, they basically pay for both of them at once, but you'd but you want the companion to be able to pay for themselves. Like the person registering, um, so the member, right? So the member pays for their event registration. Okay, well, I, I can definitely throw it on development board and just discuss further if there's a way to facilitate that. Um, you know, easiest way around is like, just basically, okay, but you want the record together, I see. Okay. Yeah, because obviously, you know, each person could register themselves. Yeah, so that's, uh, Okay, I see. So you use like the general invoice type. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely throw it on our board and just see if there's a way to do that or if it's feasible. Um, yeah, I'll definitely, I'm definitely happy to fight for whatever you guys kind of want to see out of the system and try and talk to my team further and see if we can spec something out like that. No problem, Mal. I appreciate the feedback. Um, so Holly asked, uh, I demonstrated event complimentary payment on la the last update. How is that setup enabled? So let me double check that. Let me refresh myself on that one. So that might be under, 
It might, I thought it might be under site control, but it might actually be under spelling types. So basically, I think, Holly, that one's added as a billing type. And there's basically a processing type called complementary here. So basically, what you need to do is this is um, the billing types area is where you uh, control like all the different things that are available for people to choose. Um, Basically, you can see that this is a processing type is just complementary. This one's called no charge. So you get to label it whatever you want. So if you didn't want to call it complementary, you don't have to. You could say, you know, um, free or whatever. Um, you know what I mean? Um, doesn't. But that's basically complementary is where you, you need to go add this as a billing type. Yeah, no problem at all. Yeah, so I have about like three more minutes here as long as you guys kind of need me for. But um, I'm hoping that these updates that we've released in the last few months are kind of you know, right up your guys' alley. And, you know, like I said, I'm always open to hearing more feedback about the system. I'm always happy to throw it on development board and just talk about it further. Um, some things are a bit more complex when it comes to like financials and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, we're always trying to make AMO better work for you guys. So definitely appreciate you guys' feedback. Um, you guys have any further questions? I'll give you guys a couple more minutes here. Maybe jump through your AMO and think of anything further for me. But, um, yeah, like I said, we'll basically kind of keep these uh, updates rolling out based on your guys' feedback, and I'll be doing monthly blog posts on it, um, webinar as needed, and yeah, we're kind of planning for doing some more updates um, soon here. Yeah, and I will be, um, you know, I recorded this, so this will be also be up on the site. Um, for anyone that wasn't able to attend, um, I think we had about 20 registrations. Um, yeah, and then the one I did last week or last month will also be up on the site. Um, but appreciate you guys, you know, working with us on AMO and, you know, looking forward to keep it growing and updates kind of coming out for you guys. But yeah, always reach out. If you guys even need any further help, you can definitely reach out to um, help at AMOHQ.com. And, uh, to support there you can always email me it's faster if you go through support to be honest but um you know i will if you shoot me an email i'll definitely get back to you all right thanks guys really appreciate your time today no problem thanks for the feedback guys i'll definitely talk to my team all right have a good rest of your day and weekend